Okay, it looks like it's about time to start. I want to make sure the volume's up all the way. You should be able to hear me now okay. And we're just going to continue uh, and finish the story about Stephen Sondheim's works. Um, we, we finished last week with the story of uh, Sweeney Todd. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me what happened? Let me meet everybody. Okay, everybody's now muted. All right, we're going to continue with Stephen Sondheim's saga, assuming I can get my computer to move. And the next musical that he and Hal Prince did actually was an idea uh, that came from Hal Prince's wife. The idea of doing a musical with all young people seemed to be an ideal, wonderful thought. However, it really never, ever uh, took hold. It was casting a show with young people, but what was starting to happen was every time Stephen Sondheim and Hal Prince teamed up, uh, now the New York theater community was just so uh, jealous of their success and what they were able to contribute that the vultures were circling. So they chose a very odd piece. Uh, the piece was based on a Kaufman and Hart play uh, called Merrily We Roll Along that some people think was even based upon George and Ira Gershwin, perhaps although not truly, uh, and uh, they decided to, and the style of it um, was uh, backwards, that the whole play uh, happened back in time. So you saw the people 20 minutes, I'm sorry, 20 years after they met, and it revolves backwards, not in flashback. And this became tremendously confusing for the cast, uh, the ca uh, for the audience, rather. The, the cast... <laughs> was energetic, they were young, they were exciting, uh, but most of them didn't have the dramatic ability uh, to truly carry this off. The other thing that they did was they decided not to experiment with the play, do any lab work on it, and they decided to, you know, to start to do previews live, which meant that people were coming in to see it and opinions were forming and the word was spreading that this was a total disaster. Now, I just want to point out in this picture, uh, the, the person that says Charlie, in the black shirt, that uh, ac actor's name is Lonnie Price. Uh, and he has become one of the most successful directors in the current Broadway community. So a lot of people did have their careers launched. But just listen to these reviews because they were absolutely devastating. In large part, the work of masters of the musical theater, Stephen Sondheim and Hal Prince, is neither merry nor does it roll along. In fact, it clunks, lurches, and on several occasions, faints dead away. Where did they all go so wildly wrong? Well, to begin with, the play goes backwards 25 years from 1980 to 1955. That turns out to be a wrong-headed idea from which the play profits absolutely nothing. Bad idea number two, the cast is made up entirely of young people, which means that though everybody is fiendishly cute and has energy to spare, nobody has experience. So nobody, charming though most are, have heft or weight or substance. Add to that some slim, slim themes about the horrors of success, about being true to yourself, about treasuring your friends, a score with only glimmers of the mighty talent of Stephen Sondheim, staging without even a glimmer of the mighty talent of Hal Prince, a hideous set and marginally tacky costumes, and you'll end up with an evening where you must be extra vigilant simply to spot a glancing value here and there. Oh, my. Ah, uh, now I'm here as an old and wonderful friend, not as a critic. You know, if I didn't like it, I just wouldn't run a review. Well, I had to run this review past you. Sondheim and Prince will, I'm sure, be back triumphant, but they sure weren't back tonight. David. This is all. And here is another. Let me back up one second here. Encores, you know, Merrily We Roll Along uh, crashed after eight performances, and it ended the relationship between Hal Prince and Stephen Sondheim. They thought maybe they couldn't be objective about each other's work any longer. Uh, today, when it's revived, people rush to see it. It, it. it is a challenging script, but the music is just fabulous, as always is. And City Center Encores revived it a number of years ago, and there was a near-perfect revival of it done in London several years ago 
directed by Marcia Fried Maria Friedman, and they're thinking of bringing it actually uh, to New York. Uh, they're discussing it now. Who knows? But in any event, here's some snippets from the encores Merrily We Roll Along, and you'll recognize Lin-Manuel Miranda in the cast. You for your faults and fancies. One persuades you that the other one's wrong. Most friends fade, or they don't make the great moves are quick. We make perfect as long as they're new. But our soul friends who wants to discuss old friends. Here's to us who's like. I sent off the one act. I started the story. He said to come see him. I dropped out of college. I met this musician. I'm playing a nightclub. They're doing my one act. I'm working at Red Bull. I rewrote the ballad. I finished the story. We started rehearsals. I threw out the story and then the musician. I'm moving to popular science. We're opening doors. Singing. Look who's here. Beginning to sail on a dime. Got far away shores. Getting very near. We, we have, have nothing to fear. We have no time. And here's more of Mary with you. Soon enough, you're merrily, merrily practicing dreams. Dreams that will explode. Waking up the countryside. Making you feel merrily, merrily. What can go wrong? Why make it tough by getting grumpy? Plenty of roads to 
try. He's full of advice. I drink. And Frank. No, what do you really do? God, is he nice? I really drink. What a host. Has a wife who is gorgeous. A son who's straight. He's the type you can easily learn to hate. That Frank. <laughs> who says lonely at the top. <laughs> I, I say let it never stop. It's our time coming through, all our dreams coming true, working hard, getting rich, being happy. There's a switch. Let's smile. Don't you miss writing music? He's hot, but he's cool. One day I'll get back to it. What style? Where have we heard that one before? Great cool. <laughs> if you have no idea what charisma meant, and you just can't be jealous, he's such a gent. He's the kind of a man that you can't resent. That break. You're not serious. Darling! How was it? You're not serious. Darling! You're not serious. Did you ever? Did you ever? It's the best, it's the first, it's the finest, it's the latest, it's the least, it's the worst, it's the absolutely lowest, it's the greatest, it's the single, it's the only, it's the perfect, it's the high! Dreadful! Let me back up one minute here. Whoops. Merrily We Roll Along has had a lot said and written about it. I mean, after it closed after 16 performances, uh, you know, it sort of it ruined a relationship of creativity. But many years later, Sondheim came back to it and uh, they, they adjusted it a little bit. And uh, one of the things that they did do was film a music. Uh, there was a documentary called Six by Sondheim. And Sondheim said nothing that he wrote was ever autobiographical except one song in Merrily We Roll Along, where the producer tells the young composer, why don't you write a tune we can hum? And Sondheim actually in this documentary portrayed the producer. Well, well, yeah, turned out great. What about the book? Nothing. Are you working on the book? Yes. Good. No. Mary. Right, I know. Yes, me and Balzac. I 
finished the one act. I got an audition. I started the story. A rehearsal pianist. So, where are we eating? I'm moving to Playboy. The publisher called me. I'm doing a rewrite. My parents are coming. I saw my fair lady. I rewrote the rewrite. I sort of enjoyed it. I threw out the story. But I'm meeting an agent. We'll all get together on Sunday. We're opening doors. Singing. Here we are. We're filling up days. On a dime. At Harley Shores. Looking not too far. We're following every star. There's not enough time. The producer. I sent off the one act. I started the story. He said to come see him. I dropped out of college. I met this musician. I'm playing a nightclub. They're doing my one act. I'm working for a red book. I rewrote the ballad. I finished the story. We started rehearsals. I threw out the story and then the musician. I'm moving to popular science. We're opening doors, singing, look who's here. Beginning to sail on a dime. The faraway shores came very near. We have nothing to fear. It's, it's a cautionary tale. It's, it's what can happen to you. Mm. It's how ideals can get. It's a, it's a show about expedience. It's about you've got to be very careful if you're going to take the expedient path. All they care about is getting their work done and having it heard. It is th three idealists who, whose idealism is one of the things that binds them. The thing about opening doors is it catches the whole zeitgeist, the whole thing of getting excited when you're young writers and you're knocking on producers doors and you're you know er every moment is a crisis and everything requires a phone call and everything is at a, t at a level of hysteria and uh, un until you finally get to the producer's office and then it's all a disaster This is just a draft. Right. Probably it stinks. Right. Haven't had the time to do a polish. Will you sing? Right. Who wants to live in New York? Who wants the worry, the noise, the dirt, the heat? Who wants the garbage cans clanging in the streets? Suddenly I do. They're always popping their cork. I'll fix that line. The cops, the cabbies, the sales girls up at sacks. You gotta have a real taste for maniacs. Suddenly I do. That's great. That's swell. The other stuff as well. It isn't every day I hear a score this strong. But fellas, if I may, there's only one thing wrong. There's not a tune you can hum. There's not a tune you go bum 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 dee dum. You need a tune to go bum 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 dee dum. Give me some melody. Why can't you throw them a crumb? What's wrong with letting them tap their toes a bit? I'll let you know when Stravinsky has a hit. Give me some melody. Oh, sure, I know. It's not that kind of show. But can't you have a score that's sort of in between? But play a little more, I'll show you what I mean. Who wants to live in New York? I always hated the dirt, the heat, the noise But ever since I met you, I Listen, boys, maybe it's me But that's just not a hum a mum a mum a mum a bull melody Write more, work hard, leave your name with the girl Less avant-garde, leave your name with the girl Just write a plain old melody dee 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 Stopping rehearsals, they ran out of money. We lost it when issue my book was rejected. The nightclub is raided, I have to start coaching. My parents are coming. I screwed up the laundry. My wallet was stolen. I saw the musician. We're being evicted. I'm having a breakdown. We'll all get together on Sunday. They're slamming the doors. Singing, go away. It's, it's less of a sail than a climb. That faraway shores, farther Every day, we're learning to ricochet. We still have a lot to say. You know what we'll do? We'll do a review. What? We'll do a review of our own. Who wants to live in New York? Who wants the worry, the noise, the dirt, the heat? Who wants the garbage can thing? I can see higher. Thank you. We're looking for someone with a little more experience. Next. They're always popping their cork. Oh, it's all. Thank you. You're high.
fire. I'm Beth. I'm Frank. I really thought I sank. I'm Mary. Charlie. By the way, I'm told we open Saturday. What? You're not serious. Nobody's ready. Apparently somebody canceled a booking. The songs aren't finished. Then what about costumes? How do I learn all these numbers? I'll bring you the copies Nothing of everything later this finished. Okay, you don't have to talk about it. And what do we do about getting publicity? Run around town with little stickers on windows. Don't worry about it. On Sunday we're opening doors. Singing. Here we are. Filling up days. On a dime. The faraway shores. Looking not too far. We're following every star. And of course, this documentary, The Best Worst Thing That Could Have Happened, tracked, everyone thought that this was going to be the next big success. So ABC uh, had followed the whole story from the time it was conceived as a musical through the audition process to opening night. And when it was a disaster, uh, ABC never showed this documentary. And uh, what's so interesting is that Lonnie Price, who I pointed out to you a few moments ago, uh, he actually found the footage and reconstructed it as a documentary, found all of the people that were involved with it, uh, interviewed them uh, to talk about their experience, what happened to them. Uh, and maybe one of the funniest stories was Jason Alexander, who's, who was about 18 at the time, I think, and Sondheim said to him, is there anything you can't do? And Jason Alexander told him he had a very hard time with chromatic scales and what Sondheim did was write everything that character was going to do in chromatic scales. Because uh, Sondheim told him he needed to learn how to do it, which I just think is so fascinating. Um, and here again, uh, a great number from Mary Louise. <laughs> You're somewhere a part of my life And it looks like you'll stay As the days go by I keep thinking And does it end? Where's the day I'll have started Forgetting but I just go on thinking and sweating and cursing and crying and turning and reaching and waking and dying and no, not a day goes by, not a Still somehow part of my life And you won't go away So there's hell to pay And until I die I'll die day after day Day after day after day after day after day after day.
So there's hell to pay And until I die I'll die Day after day after day after day after day After day after day, after day. That was, of course, Bernadette Peters uh, at the Stephen Sondheim 80th birthday celebration. Well, after 1981, Stephen Sondheim really thought about giving up writing Broadway musicals. It just, he, he was so discouraged uh, by what, what happened with Merrily We Roll Along. And by the way, it's being filmed right now, but uh, it's going to take 20 years to film it because they're using a young cast and they're going to film it uh, as the characters grow older, but then put it back together uh, in reverse, as Sondheim and George Firth actually wrote it. Um, Sunday in the Park came by accident. Stephen Sondheim meets uh, uh, James Lapine uh, at, a, at an event of some sort, and uh, they start talking about artists and the pain they go through for their craft. And Sondheim invites him over to his townhouse in the Turtle Bay section of New York, where they start to talk about what could they write uh, together about that? And they discovered that maybe what they could do after a whole lot of conversation is there is a painting that hangs in the Art Institute in Chicago called Sunday Afternoon on the Isle of Grand Jatte. And it's at this painting painted by George Seurat, an artist that nobody really knows much about. They started to talk about how he was shunned by the uh, salons in Paris during the time, and that his style of painting uh, was challenged by everyone. And Lapine and Sondheim start working on this, and they decide what they're going to do is, is try it out uh, in, at the Playwrights Horizon in New York, an off-Broadway venue that would give them the opportunity to experiment with the piece. Um, they know immediately uh, that they want... Uh, Bernadette Peters, there was a part written for Christine Baranski, uh, which disappeared. Uh, and uh, it's the first act is how this painting gets created by a man who truly does not understand uh, the commitments he needs to make both personally to his art and to, uh, to the people uh, who he shares his life with. The, the music is brilliantly constructed because most of the music that the character of George sings in the first act specifically uh, is done in staccato because George is a pointillist and, uh, you know, Bernadette Peters plays the part of uh, one of the women who is obviously in the painting who may have been his love interest. And it was easy to construct all of this because no one really knew any of the facts about George Seurat or his painting. Then what we find out is that in the second act, we have uh, this very old woman who is the daughter of the woman who is in the painting telling George about uh, what uh, her mother went through and how her mother taught herself to read. And George actually has this book that was his great-grandmother's primer as he teaches himself some lessons about life. Well, James Lapine uh, they, they had a phenomenal first act, and they really didn't quite know uh, what to do with the second. And many people always thought this was a two-act musical that really only had one act. 
But in recent revivals, uh, it's really become very clear that the two work together beautifully. And the most recent major revival was Jake Gyllenhaal uh, and, and it really, uh, and Annalee Ashford, uh, and it really pulled together how beautiful the work was. Uh, this too was filmed by PBS. You can get it uh, on a CD and watch it. It won the Pulitzer Prize. It truly is uh, quite a phenomenal, it's, uh, it's a great piece. More boats, more trees. to sit in the shade while well, I have to stand in the sun. George. Hello, George. There is someone in this dress. Mm. A trickle of sweat. The back of the head He always does this Now the foot is dead Sunday in the park with George One more The collar is damp Beginning to pinch The bustle slipping I won't budge one inch Who was at the zoo, George? Who was at the zoo? The monkey's in who, George? The monkey's in who? Don't move, please. Artists are bizarre, fixed, cold. That's you, George, you're bizarre, fixed, cold. I like that in a man. Sweat, which adds to the weight. The sun is blinding. All right, concentrate. Eyes open, please. Sunday in the park with George. Look out at the water, not at me. Sunday in the park with George. Concentrate, concentrate. I love 
Stay right under the tit. No, don't give in, just lift the arm a bit. Lift the arm, please. Sunday in the park with George. Muscle high, please. Not even a nod, as if I were trees. The ground could open, he would still say, Please, never know with you, George. Who can know with you? The others are new, George. Before we get through, I'll get to you too. God, I am so hot. Well, there are worse things than staring at the water on a Sunday. There are worse things than staring at the water as you're posing for a picture after sleeping on the ferry after getting up at seven to go over to an island in the middle of the river, half an hour of the city. That, of course, was the really exciting opening sequence from Sunday in the Park with George, where he's starting to work on the painting. He's drawing the different people that he sees. The dress, the way that worked was they had a garage door opener rigged to it, uh, and it was like a, it was operated off stage by the stage manager. Uh, there was one night in previews where the dress didn't close, uh, so Bernadette Peters actually threw it under her arm and walked off stage with it. Uh, that's what you call live theater. Uh, and of course, if you're going to have a pointillist as the central character, his girlfriend, of course, would be named Dot. This is when the second act, I believe, I hope I'm telling you the right thing. Here. Uh, this is the dog song where he's talking about the dog. Mademoiselle. You and me, pal. Second bottle. Ah, she looks for me. Bonnet flapping, yapping, roof, chicken, pastry. Yes, she looks for me. Good. Let her look for me to tell me why she left me. As I always knew she would. I had thought she understood. They have never understood and no reason that they should. But if anybody could. Finishing the hat. How you have to finish the hat. How you watch the rest of the world from a window while you finish the hat. Mapping out a sky. What you feel like planning a sky. What you feel when voices that come through the window go until they distance and die. Until there's nothing but sky. And how you're always turning back too late from the grass or the stick or the dog or the light. How the kind of woman willing to wait, not the kind that you want to find waiting to return you to the night. Dizzy from the hat. Coming from the hat. Studying the hat. Entering the world of the hat. Reach through the world of the hat like a window Back to this one from that Studying a face Stepping back to look at a face Leaves a little space in the way Like a window but to see It's the only way to see 
Always standing by, mapping out the sky. Finishing a hat, starting on a hat. Finishing a hat, look I made a hat. Well, there never was a hat. There are two books that Sondheim wrote himself about all of the detail of his work, the stories, the, what, went, what went into them, all of his lyrics. And uh, the first one was called Finishing the Hat, and the second one was called Look, I Made a Hat. Uh, very apropos and poignant, uh, uh, as this was a very uh, personal work for him. And now the latest Sondheim musical, Sunday in the Park with George. George is the French Impressionist, Georges Seurat. In the park, just outside of Paris, was the stage for his famous painting, A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of Le Grand Jacques, which now hangs in the Art Institute of Chicago. George has worked on his pointless painting of the various park regulars for two years, and having just sketched his mother, is about to bring order out of chaos and complete his canvas at last. Mandy Patinkin is George, and Bernadette Peters is his mistress and model. Remember, George. Order. Design. Tension. Balance.
if you're in the theater watching Sunday in the Park with George, when that scene happens, it is so stirring. Uh, when that painting comes together, it's really so thrilling. I noticed there are some chats. Uh, I just want to see if anybody's asking anything um, uh, specific in that. And that Sondheim there uh, that you can see, this was 1984. He was very proud of this piece. Uh, and before they even finished it, he made a uh, commitment to James Lapine that they would write their next musical uh, together. The second act has the part that is so interesting, how the critics take everything apart. I mean, apart. I don't understand completely. I'm not surprised. But he combines all these different trends. I'm not surprised. You can't divide our today into categories neatly. Oh. What matters is the means, not the end. I'm not surprised. That, that is the state of the art, my dear. That is the state of the art. It's not enough knowing good from rotten. You're telling me. When something new pops up every day. You're telling me. It's only new, though, for now. No, though. But yesterday's forgotten. And tomorrow is already passé. There's no surprise. That is the state of the art, my friend. That is the state of the art. He's an original. Was. I like the images. Some. On. You had your moment, now it's George's turn. It's George's turn. I you wasn't talking turns, I'm talking hard. Yes. But is it really new? Well, no. It's all collaborator. Oh, yes. It's all promotion, but then that is the state of the art, isn't it? Well, art isn't easy. Even when you have amassed it, fighting for prizes. No one can be an oracle. Art isn't easy. Suddenly, you're past it. A compromise, and then when it's all a gold record. Art isn't easy. Art isn't easy. All right, George, as long as it's your night, George. You know what's in the room, George. Another chromaloon, George. It's time to get to work. George, look, all these lovely people in front of our painting. George, I'd like you to meet one of our board members. This is Harriet Pauley. Oh, what a pleasure. <laughs> and this is my friend, Billy Webster. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Well, I'll just leave you three to chat. <laughs> uh, Harriet was so impressed by your presentation. This is the third piece of yours I've seen. They're getting so large. <laughs> uh, what uh, heading does your work fall under? Most people think of it as sculpture. Sculpture? I like to think of myself as an inventor as well as a sculptor. It's so unconventional for sculpture. Say, cheese, George. And put them at their ease, George. You're up on the trapeze, George. Machines don't grow on trees, George. Start putting it together. Art isn't easy, even when you're hot. Are these inventions of yours one of a kind? Financing art is easy, yes. Financing it is not. I take a year to make a vision's just a vision if it's only in your head. The minute he finishes one, he starts raising money for the next one. No one gets to see it, it's as good as dead. Work, work, work. It has to come to light. I put the names of my contributors on the side of each machine. Some very impressive people. Well, we must speak further. My family has a foundation, and we're always looking for new projects. Bit by bit, putting it together. Family is all you have. Piece by piece, only way to make a work of art. Every moment makes a contribution. Every little detail plays a part. Having divisions, no solution. Everything depends on execution. Putting it together. That's what counts. Actually, the board of the foundation is meeting next week. Ounce by ounce. Putting it together. You'll come to lunch. Small amounts. Adding them to make a work of art. First of all, you need a good foundation. Otherwise, it's risky from the start. It's a little cocktail conversation, but without the proper preparation. Having just a vision's no solution. Everything depends on execution. The art of making art. Is putting it together. Bit by bit, link by link, making the connections. Drink by drink, fixing and perfecting the design. I'm just a dab of politician, always knowing where to draw the line. Lining up for funds, but in addition, lining up a prominent commission. Otherwise, your perfect composition isn't going to get much exhibition. Art isn't easy. <laughs> Every minor detail is a major decision. Have to keep things in scale. Have to hold to your vision. 
to my start to feel defensive. I remember lasers are expensive. What's a little cocktail conversation? If it's going to get you your foundation, lead to a prominent commission and mix a mission in addition. Art isn't easy trying to make connections. Who understands it? Difficult to evaluate. Art isn't easy trying to form collections. Always in transit. Then when you have to collaborate, art isn't easy. Anyway, you look at it. Dot by dot, building up the image. Shot by shot, keeping it a distance doesn't pay. Still, if you remember your objective, not give all your privacy away. A little bit of height can be effective, as long as you can keep it in perspective. After all, without some recognition, no one's going to give you a commission. When we'll cause a crack in the foundation, you'll have wasted all that conversation. Art isn't easy. Hey, it's the brain. Even if you're smart. A little technical screw you think up tonight. all together, <laughs> and something falls apart. Art isn't easy. Overnight, you're a trend, you're the right combination, then the trend's at an end. You suddenly lost your sensation. So you should support the competition. Try to set aside your own ambition, even while you jockey for position. If you feel a sense of coalition, then you never really stand alone. If you want your work to reach fruition, what you need to link with your tradition. And of course, a prominent commission. <laughs> Plus a little formal recognition. So that you can go on exhibit. So that your work go on exhibition. Be nice, George. I was hoping it would be a series of three, four at the most. You have to pay a price, George. We have been there before, you know. You never suffer from a shortage of opinions, do you, Blair? You never minded my opinions when they were in your favor. They like to give I advice, George. I your work from the beginning, you know that. You were really on to something Don't with think these light machines. George. In New George, they play to the blue George. You knew Russia through George. And even if it's true, George, you do what you can do. By bit, putting it together, piece by piece, working up the vision night and day. All it takes is time and perseverance, with a little luck along the way, putting in a personal appearance, gathering supporters and adherents. But he combines all these different trends. Mapping up the right configuration, starting with a suitable foundation. He's an original. Was lining up the prominent commission and an exhibition in addition. Your little dab of politician. Their little bunch of publications. What do you a great commentary on what artists go through into the woods of course came next uh lapine and sondheim taking fairy tales adding a fairy tale that they wrote on its own uh they have cinderella rumple stiltskin jack and the beanstalk uh and of course uh, they had the story of a baker and his wife that they added to pull it all together. Uh, Into the Woods is a metaphor for in the woods being our journey through life, of course. And this is two exquisite songs sung by Bernadette Peters. Careful the things you say, children will listen. Careful the things you do, children will see and learn. Children may not obey, but children will listen. Children will look to you for which way to turn, to learn what to be. Children will glisten, temper 
I think of so many of the Sondheim songs, that one says so much about the way uh, we parent and what life brings us. Uh, it's a very important piece. Many people said that this was maybe his most important lyric uh, shortly after he died. This next song is from a show that I was in called Into the Woods. <laughs> But I didn't sing this song in the show. <laughs> but I love this song, so I figured, what the heck, this is my show now. I can sing whatever I want. So I Can be good. You decide what's right. You decide what's good. Just remember someone is on.
obsession came next. Uh, the central themes of obsession, illness, passion, uh, really one of the most romantic of all uh, of the Sondheim pieces. It's 90 minutes long. Uh, Stephen Sondheim saw this movie. He conceived it. Uh, it's based upon an Italian movie, Passione d'Amore. It's an exquisite piece. And the way it's written, the audience never has a chance to applaud anything because the music and the dialogue are so centrally connected. Uh, in the original production, it opened with this nude scene, which was totally ridiculous that it had to be that way. But they were showing passion right from the beginning. It's the story of a very handsome soldier, and you see that he's in a relationship with a very beautiful woman. He's sent to an outpost in an Italian uh, battalion, and uh, he reads and he shares books with the uh, sister of the chief officer there, but she's a very sickly, miserable woman, and she becomes obsessed with him, and it takes time, and what it really is is an allegory of beauty is only skin deep. I'm so happy, I'm afraid I'll die here in your arms. What would you do if I died like this right now here in your arms? That we ever should have met is a miracle. No, inevitable. An inevitable, yes, but I confess it was the look. The look. The sadness in your eyes that day when we glanced at each other We in were both dark. unhappy Unhappiness can be seductive You pitied me How quickly pity, pity leads to love. love All this happiness Merely from a glance in the park So much happiness We might have met so much sooner. I could I have given you what love was. my youth. I thought I knew how much I could feel. All the time we lost. I didn't know what love I've was. I've never known what love was. But now, and now I, I do. It's what, what I feel with you. The happiness I feel with you. So much happiness. In a park. By chance, by necessity, this is happy by the sadness that we saw in each no other. No one else has ever felt before. Just another love story. That's what they would claim. Another simple love story. Aren't all of them the same? No, but this is more. We feel more. This is so much more. Like every other love story Some say happiness comes and goes Then this happiness is a kind of happiness no one really knows I thought I knew what love was I thought it was I'm learning. I thought where there was love, there was shame. That with you, but with you, there's, there's just happiness. Endless happiness. And of course, that scene uh, really sets the tone for passion. And then at the end, when he realizes he truly loves Fosca. Loving you is not a choice. It's who I am. Loving you is not a choice and not much reason to rejoice. But it gives me purpose gives me voice to say to the world this is why i live you are why i live loving you is 
give her life for yours. Would she judge you? I would. Happily. In the end, you finally see what is beautiful about me. letter from Clara. Yes. It's over. Finished. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? I would have thought that you would be pleased. There was a time when I would have welcomed that news. I don't wish for you to be unhappy. I don't wish to see you sad. I feel so much, but I'm not really sad. I thought you loved Clara. I did love Clara. I did. But no one has ever loved me as deeply as you no one has truly loved me as you have Fosca love without reason love without mercy love without pride or shame love unconcerned with being returned no wisdom no judgment no caution no blame. No one has ever known me as clearly as you. No one has ever shown me what love could be like until now. Not pretty or safe or easy, but more than I ever knew. Love within reason, that isn't love. And I've learned that from you. Just, just such a beautiful lyric. And of course, the next musical that Sondheim wrote was the musical Roadshow. And uh, Roadshow uh, never really caught on. It wasn't really successful. Something Sondheim had worked on for years, the story of the Meisner uh, brothers. Uh, but he ha he announced just two weeks before he died uh, that he was about to hear um, uh, that he was about to announce a new musical that's all ready for next season. Who knows? Um, it might happen. And um, anyway, uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions about Sondheim, but you know he left us with so much. And uh, the theater community, almost everything you turn on. Uh, you hear uh, is just the great loss that people feel uh, because he's just gone and there won't really be anything more that he'll add. Um, you know, it's just so sad. So hopefully this last musical was really ready uh, and will be something that he will uh, actually have left us. So I look for everybody. I hope you all have a happy and a healthy new year. Uh, I look for, we, you know, 2022 has got to be better. I read in the post this morning that they think this Omicron virus will peak on the week of January 9th. 
uh, and it's, well, you know, based upon what they sing, that this is what uh, the thoughts are. And uh, just wish everybody a happy and healthy new year. And as soon as the recording's done, I'll get it out, of course, as always. See you all next Friday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.